in case you do uh, lose the recording in between you guys can uh, refresh the screen or uh, you can you can kind of re-log back in and uh, things should work start working for you so uh, this is about me right i'm sajid i'm the uh, co-founder and uh, ceo of rain lab technologies as well as sirius motorsports uh, some of you might know me from the serious days. Some of you might know me uh, through Rain Lab, and this is what I do. I uh, have two careers. So the first one is where I work as an entrepreneur, into engineering services, training and uh, learning and training development, and uh, I also work as an adjunct faculty with Bits Pilani. So I'm a faculty with Bits Pilani, where I teach uh, MTech courses on automotive engineering and automotive electronics. Right. And uh, I also have about 16 years of uh, industry experience, primarily in the uh, motorsports and uh, engine calibration and control system development domain. So what that means is I have exposure in multiple fields, not just the core automotive, but I have exposure in uh, convergence domain. So where all these uh, electrical, mechanical and uh, CSIT systems, they come together. That's basically where my core um, you know skill sets like so uh, that said that said about me let's just uh, move on and uh, you know the uh, the multi million dollar question for you guys uh, why did you guys choose engineering right um, you could just uh, type it out in the chat box so what exactly prompted you to choose engineering and uh, Maybe, you know, just, just for me to get to know you guys, we just have some eight, nine guys over here. So if you could just uh, type out what actually prompted you to take up engineering, right? It would be interesting for me to see the, uh, you know, the answers for it. And uh, let me also put up another poll here. Are you really keen on being a typical engineer, right? Whatever it be, uh, it could be a mechanical engineer, it could be a, um, you know, IT or, or, or something like that. So um, how keen are you on being an engineer and uh, why did you choose engineering? So great. Um, quite a few of you are still interested in being an engineering engineer, which means you want to like uh, uh, graduate. I, I mean, that that's really appreciated. Um, not a lot of people have that conviction, right? So now if you did choose that, so now um, why did you choose engineering? Is there any specific reason that you chose engineering or is it that, you know, you just chose engineering because that was the best thing for you to do? So why exactly did you choose engineering? Um, just type it out in the chat box. Uh, keep the answers coming. It, it gets a lot more interesting if you are interacting. Uh, this is an interactive session, right? Unlike your regular college webinars or something, I'm here to uh, probably help you guys out right uh, i'm here for my own sake as well but I'm, I'm here to help you guys out as well so why did you guys choose engineering so do you want to uh, continue on the typical engineering path or do you want to uh, you know explore other engineering i mean other career options you can still be an engineer but you don't have to end up working as an engineer you can you can kind of figure out other career paths as well so um, are you guys still interested in figuring out other career paths or are you guys like uh, uh, you know kind of like do you do you feel uh, stuck at engineering or something like that so uh, you have been interested in motorsports, so I choose mechanical engineering Mohammed Irfan, great great for you um, so now uh, what if I told you that there are other you know kind of like uh, uh, jobs, other op opportunities for you guys where you, you you don't have to exactly like go to an office and work. You could have a remote working option and uh, you know you could get paid up to 90,000 USD per annum. So uh, it's I mean, I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm not joking about it. The median pay for these alternate careers that I'm going to be talking about is about 60,000 US dollars. So of course that's that's uh, if you work in the international market you can still choose to work in the indian market as well quite a lot of job opportunities are available and uh, you would not regret working there right i mean you would kind of still make the same thing as what uh, uh, any typical engineers would make right so now 
continuing from the last uh, you know discussion uh, is engineering really for you so now this is a question which you might have to seriously ask yourself uh, quite a lot of us we have chosen engineering i'm an engineer i if you ask me am i continuing to work as an engineer i would say no i do i do some engineering related stuff but it is basically not what i studied in engineering college there's been quite a lot of, lot of knowledge which i picked up myself and uh, if you ask me was engineering typically for me um did i get into the typical engineering jobs after engineering no i would say um, i definitely did not right i definitely did not get into it and uh, i was someone who was always looking at different opportunities right so now to put it into perspective okay let me uh, let me kind of ask you the question like this so now uh, you have two very prominent personalities like right so dr k shivan Uh, who is the chairman of isro and then you have uh, ar rahman the music composer so uh, can we say that ar rahman is less intelligent than dr k shivan because you know ar rahman is not an engineer can we can we go stereotype someone like that i would say uh, it is it is a, a completely wrong thing to do right so now this is part of a long term research that we've been kind of doing at rain lab um, i don't know if you know about us but we do work uh, quite a lot on the uh, psychology side of learning and development which means it's not just training that we offer but we try to figure out why is it that an employee is excelling in a certain field while other employees are not excelling in certain field we do this work for companies like uh, robert bosch and suez and and siemens health health and years quite a lot of companies like that right so now as a part of this what we found out is that not every single person has got the same intelligence levels now if i ask you um, how do you measure intelligence you would probably say you know go measure the uh, iq of a person right so now iq is basically a magnitude it's a quantity so i might be very you know i might have a very high iq but uh, have you heard of the saying that the really smart people you know the first benchers the ones who excelled in engineering they end up working for the last benches right so you might think it is not true or you might think that it is just a fluke or something but the problem here is that we we confuse the magnitude of intelligence with the type of intelligence right these are two different things and in fact uh, it has been scientifically proven that there are eight different types of intelligence right there are eight different types of intelligence it's not one single intelligence humans they have eight different types of intelligence so now just because you guys are not uh, good at engineering so maybe let me ask you this how many of you here um, have got a cgpa of maybe you know 8 plus or 9 plus how many of you guys are, are there in the 8 uh, uh, plus cgpa range uh, i mean nothing i mean no harm if you if you don't uh, want to divulge but a simple yes or a no uh, just so that understand me i was never there in that right i was i was not uh, exactly at that high scoring levels i had certain subjects where i had really good marks like say automotive engineering i had 10 on 10 cgp but mathematics applied thermodynamics applied thermodynamics i think i had about 6 uh, mathematics i could never go more than 7 right so uh, how many of you here are are really like 9 point someone how many of you here really struggle with certain subjects so now the whole point here is that it is it is not that you are less intelligent than someone else right it is just that you have a different type of intelligence and uh, the more quicker you realize that you are a different type of you have different type of an intelligence the more easier it becomes for you so now just do a small uh, you know self analysis and tell me what type of an intelligence do you possess right Uh, so you could be someone who's really good with people and there's a, i think there's a poll which has come up on it uh, you could just go and vote for something um, just think what is it that you're good at are you good at sports then you are body smart are you good at music then you are music smart um, maybe you are you are someone a naturalist you love going on walks you love wildlife then you are nature smart so uh, there's no right or wrong answer here so just go and click on something and uh, 
just let everyone know what, what I mean, no one's going to know what you voted for. So just go ahead and, and just uh, vote over there and uh, let everyone see like uh, what exactly you're good at. Right. So out of the uh, out of the uh, seven people who have voted, only 33 percent are in the logic smart category. So which means only 33 percent are probably going to be uh, comfortable working as engineers. This does not mean that you cannot be engineers, right? Uh, it is it is nothing like that. It does not mean you cannot be engineers. It is just that you could probably be better doing something else, right? And for people, I mean, and when this is true, and when this is scientifically proven that there are eight different types of intelligence and humans can have different types of uh, core intelligence levels, why do we want to thrust the same old career options on everyone, right? Uh, doesn't really make sense, right? So what we need to do is we need to figure out what could be the other types of career options which could be available for engineers where you could probably go and try to like uh, leverage certain other characteristics of yours. And in those lines, uh, there is something which we've been working on recently. And uh, these are these are kind of like the three uh, alternate careers which really came up uh, when we started like doing things. You know, technical writing and content marketing, maybe these are things you have heard about, but there is one very important topic which I want to talk about, which is called as instructional design. And there's a good reason why I've kept it in the last so that, um, you know, you guys don't lose interest in it. So stay with us. Instructional design is, is uh, essentially what I wanted to discuss about, but let's just like take it step by step. And I'm going to tell you what are the three different career paths that you could choose if you are completing engineering but you don't want to continue working as an engineer so if you are someone who wants to break free from the engineering mold if you want to work if you don't want to work a nine to five job maybe you want to travel maybe you want to take things at your own pace you want to do remote working and still make you know as much as what a typical engineer makes then uh, these are probably going to be the career options for you how do we know it we've been doing this for the last six seven months now and uh, we've been seeing quite a lot of traction with it, which is kind of why we wanted to uh, share it with you guys as well. So now if you are someone who is interested in probably like pursuing an alternate career, if you want to break away from the regular mold, if you want to go do your own thing, I mean, basically, you know, uh, maybe you want to travel and uh, still probably like make money while you're traveling. If, if you are that kind of a person, typically, uh, then these are probably the career options which you could do. So now. Coming to the first one, uh, this is called as technical writing. So technical writing is basically that engineer's job, uh, which is which is kind of like holding your entire product customer relations together. So now engineers who work on the R&D, they are not really good at preparing technical documentation. In fact, most of the companies, if you see, they have a huge team uh, which, which focuses only on technical writing and documentation. Now you might think, what's the fun in it? Um, I'm not building anything. I'm not creating anything. The reality is this. Even if you do take up a typical engineering job, you are not going to be given the opportunity to go create something new, basically. That is just not going to happen, right? But at least instead of doing the same old work over and over again, at least you get to have some kind of a difference when you take up technical writing. And what's most important is technical writing is something where like you can you can kind of leverage a lot of different skills. And most importantly, this is something where remote options are very much possible. So you want to travel, you want to just work three days, four days in a week, you want to do something like that then the first career option for you is technical writing. It's also kind of relatively the most um, easiest skill set you can pick up. So just go do some, uh, you know, training on Excel, basic Excel trainings, go to YouTube and figure out how to use XML, right? XML is, is one, uh, uh, one of the important skill sets that you guys need to have. And you do that, then you obviously start becoming good at technical writing. Right. And there are quite a lot of uh, entry level jobs available as well. So as of checking last, I think this was last week or something. Um, I think I saw something like about uh, thousand plus jobs on LinkedIn alone. I'm not talking about the regular monster and all those things. I'm just talking about LinkedIn alone. Right. So um, I, I mean, I, I, are you finding this really interesting? Because I mean, this is something which I'm so, so interesting. Uh, I find it really interesting because uh, 
you know this is the first time that me as an engineer i've completed it's been 17 years since i completed uh, my engineering and i've got into my first job and for the first time in my life thanks to the pandemic uh, not that I'm, I'm for it but but thanks to the pandemic i'm finding that there are a lot of alternate career options which are opening up right um, never before has this happened for me it is just for the very first time that i'm seeing that these career opportunities are opening up so the first of it is technical writing the second one is on content marketing so i said it's arranged on the level of difficulties and as you know as it gets more difficult the number of jobs get less as well and the salaries go really high right so now the second on the list is content marketing now content marketing is not something you might be innately aware about but every single time you go to google and you search for something like how to tune ecs what you want to probably like get into uh, so suppose you you do a search for from india right for you so how do these results come up 99% 90% 99% it's because someone very deliberately wrote an article about that particular search term right so you do that search term you figure out like what exactly people are searching for and you go you write some technical articles now writing technical articles you need not exactly be like a very creative person nope not like that at all the really creative people are not doing content marketing content marketing is basically being done by engineers who have the technical knowledge and they are able to like take the technical knowledge and convert it into some kind of an article which will in turn go and engage with the users now imagine any company out there on the internet if they want to engage with users the only way they can do that is basically by doing some content marketing you go, you do some content marketing, you figure out how to write articles. It's not easy, it's, 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 it's pretty, pretty simple as well. Um, you get hired as a content marketer. And the best part about content marketing is you are not paid by hours, right? You're just paid by the number of words you write. So you'll have to build a portfolio and then they say, okay, we'll pay you 100 rupees uh, per word that you write. I mean, if you're really good. So you write uh, maybe a thousand uh, word article, you get paid about a lakh of rupees. I mean, really good people do get paid, but usually for a thousand page article, you get paid, I mean, thousand word article, you get paid about 10 or 15,000 rupees. It's, it's still cool, right? I mean, you can choose, uh, you can choose like uh, when you want to do this, you can choose how you want to do it. And basically all the skill sets that you need is the basic XML skills that you have technical writing and then on top of it you add some uh, web development because content marketers are supposed to take these articles and they're supposed to put it into some kind of like a, a web page or something so uh, you you basically like need to have some html css and uh, all of those things right and uh, apart from it what you do have the opportunities that you have is that um, Content marketing is something which is not going to go away. So any any company which is there on the internet, if they want to do any kind of a marketing, they are going to look for content marketers. And the advantage here is that not everyone can become a content marketer. So some suppose someone wants uh, maybe say I'm 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 Sajid and uh, I want to uh, market my automotive related training. Not any Tom, Dick, and Harry can come and write about automotive training, right? So they need someone. and wordpress html thing and they need someone who understands how to do content marketing so now you are from a specific engineering stream so you take whatever little knowledge that you have in that stream you combine it with um, you know some creative knowledge you combine it with the knowledge of how to do content marketing and that is pretty much all that you need to do to kind of get yourself registered as a content marketer right so now these were, uh, you know, the, the two things which I wanted to, uh, the primary things which I wanted to share with you. Now, before we move into uh, the next uh, career option, um, how many of you are really looking at alternate careers for yourselves? Just so that I understand uh, where you stand. So how many of you are really looking for alternate career options? Okay. 
Okay, great. So nine of you are interested in the alternate career options. Great. So now let's move to, uh, I mean, probably like look at the opportunity. So I did find about 3000 plus jobs on content writing. So these are all at the um, entry levels. I'm not talking about uh, senior or, or, or mid-level positions. I'm talking about entry level positions basically here, right? And uh, one thing you do need is for any of these jobs, you need to create a portfolio. So suppose you are you are trying to uh, build a portfolio for yourself, you need to be able to have some kind of uh, references and some kind of previous examples which you can take and you can showcase to these people and probably like uh, you know market yourself and 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 land these jobs. Now coming to the most uh, probably like the single most important thing which I wanted to talk to you today, uh, this is called as instructional design, right? So uh, instructional design is what we are here for. Uh, this is something which we've been like uh, working on for quite some time now and uh, this is what i wanted to really like uh, talk to you about right so what exactly is instructional design right before we go into it um, you do know that instruction instructional design this has got something to do with e-learning right if you didn't then yes instructional design is a part and parcel of e-learning and uh, this is probably the only field which in the recent times is kind of recession proof, right? Because anytime there is an economic recession, what people do is they probably cut out on everything else, but they want to go and they want to kind of like educate themselves. They want to kind of learn a new uh, skill. They want to kind of like uh, learn something new. They want to like qualify themselves, maybe earn some new certificates so that they can either get a new job or switch careers or basically, you know, get some better um, opportunities, right? So, uh, just to put it into a perspective, right? Let me let me probably like ask you this question. Uh, if I'd asked you two years back, right? Two years back, if I'd asked you, would you be willing to, uh, you know, attend an online engineering class, right? How many of you would have said yes? I personally uh, would have had my own restrictions, but um, how many of you would have probably been open to that idea, right? So most of us, we grew up thinking that a lot of things, engineering especially, these are not things which you can probably like teach online. We were of the opinion that you definitely wanted to kind of like only learn it offline. But now online learning has become inevitable. And as we move forward, we will find that it's actually a lot more flexible to do an online, online learning. Like uh, why do you have to waste four years of your life going and sitting in a college and learning it? when you can actually start working somewhere for four years and then side by side learn your engineering subjects as well so that you know four years you have earned your money you've also done your engineering and once you've completed your engineering you get a bonus you get a hike and you kind of go into a better job opportunity wouldn't wouldn't that actually be better i mean that's how the whole world learns engineering and it's only in india where this kind of happens in the other way right so whether we like it or not E-learning is basically something which is here to stay and it is not going to go away. So then you ask me, um, why do we need to uh, actually do something called as this instructional design? Um, what you think uh, is, is basically like, uh, why do we need an instructional design? Can't I just go prepare some PPTs and can't I just teach something like what my teachers are exactly doing, right? So how many of you here actually like, uh, you know, prefer the way that your teachers are teaching you courses. So how do, do you do you actually find your uh, online classes interesting? Or are you guys finding it boring because your teacher is basically like just putting out some PPTs there and he's just going through it. How many of you find your online classes interesting actually? A simple yes, no on the chat box if you could. Are you finding the online classes interesting? whatever it is that your teachers are doing. <clears throat> right, so maybe that's because uh, they have a slide like this and um, what they do is they look at the slide, they don't look at you, there's no eye contact. They look at the slide and they say, an IC engine is a device that con converts chemical energy into mechanical energy using a slider crank and then there's a gearbox, there's a clutch and power goes to the wheels. 
maybe this is kind of how uh, they think that you will have to teach online right but that that just because that they have not had sufficient experience they have not had sufficient exposure to how exactly you will have to teach online but rather now the same thing i'll see like if i can present it in a different way right so uh, i put the same picture here but i also do add something else which is kind of going to make it curious for you so now obviously when i when i do this as a class i'll not put the text there earlier i'll i'll go one by one right so i'm going to ask them do you know what is the uh, relation between a cycle pump and an ic engine right that's how i'm going to ask them they'll say um, i don't know then i'm going to tell them both of these things they do the same thing they suck in air they compress it and then they push off the air so essentially speaking an ic engine is a cycle pump they are not different right but the ic engine also does one extra thing which is uh, along with the air you put some fuel into the cylinder as well and once the cylinder is inside i mean the fuel is inside the cylinder you uh, put a spark inside you burn the fuel and it basically produces an explosion so the common thing between an ic engine and an air pump is that both of them compress air but an ic engine does two things differently so the first one is you put some fuel and burn it in an ic engine and uh, because the burning explosion happens uh, you don't have to actually like keep pushing an ic engine the explosion kind of keeps the engine running whereas with the cycle pump you will have to keep pressing it yourself right so now did you find a difference in the way the same topic was explained in both of these slides was there a difference in the way that information was presented was there a difference in the way that the information was read out to you so did i read out from the slide or did i use the slide as an anchor and did i kind of hold your attention using that slide did you actually find a difference between the two different ways right so what exactly we are trying to do here is we are trying to go by some kind of a scientific process i have a certain methodology and using that methodology i am trying to make the same concept a lot more interesting right so now how long do you think our students would sit through endless lectures you know paying lakhs and lakhs in fees they'll sit for endless lectures listening to the teachers going through ppt you know i'm basically writing uh, you know lines and lines of stories on my ppt i'm putting something here i'm talking people are not going to be interested they are going at one point of a time say like no we are not interested we don't want to do engineering so how do you still hold attention you do hold their attention basically by doing instructional design so any instruction that you are giving to the students it has to be deliberately planned right you cannot just simply put a ppt and come and sit and stand in front of them of the students and start talking like if i wanted to present this in front of you i have been working on this presentation for the last two days and i have run through multiple iterations of it until i know this is the concise way in which i can convey whatever information i want to convey to you right so i have to figure out what is the psychology behind uh, you know students learning and then i have a framework i stick to the framework and i deliver whatever instructions i want to deliver to you right so this process is called as instructional design and every now and then you will come across some teachers whom you would say um, you know he is just simply superb he teaches in a very good way right so those are the teachers who have intuitively understood okay this is what students want and this is how i will have to teach right they have understood that but what i am here to tell you is that you don't have to have that kind of an experience to become a good instructional designer there are actually some very simple process that you can follow and guess what instructional design is just as easy as following the frameworks right so now this is the careers that i wanted to talk to you guys about and this also happens to be a little bit more technically demanding it is good for you because as engineers you can pick up whatever skills it is that is needed for picking this up you just learn some little bits from here and there you pick up these skills and advantage is that pretty much any single company out there they would technically be in 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 need of some kind of a lnd learning and so you take the amount of project come absolutely zero we've been searching for a couple of instructional designers to join our company because we are developing a lot of content we have absolutely no one how many of you are aware of the fact that there is how many of you have heard, even heard of
Chrome or or probably like Articulate or Storyline. These are the software that we use for instructional design. A uh, huge consortium, something like uh, uh, Adobe. They have spent time and they have kind of like put the software out there. And all that we know is probably Illustrator or probably like uh, you know Photoshop. That that's basically what we know. Yes, I'll do that. So is it is it better now, Raj? Is the audio better? Okay, great. So um, right. So basically, what happens is there is there is a huge market out there, and pretty much this is not being met anywhere. There is no single person or or training out there which kind of prepares a student to kind of get into an instructional designer's job. So just go again, search. There are still thousand plus jobs which are available, and it needs quite a lot of different skill sets. Right. So some people they say you we need you to have captivate skills. Some of them say that we need you to understand what an LMS is. Have you have you ever thought of what an LMS is? Have you tried hosting an LMS? Have you tried working with setting up an LMS? These are basically the jobs which an instructional designer has to do. And since there is there is absolutely no place where someone can learn all this as a course so far, that is basically why there is such a huge demand. And usually like. If there is a huge demand, people do get paid a lot as well. So entry-level instructional designers start with about 3.5 to 4 lakhs per annum. Really experienced ones, maybe 10 years of experience, 8 years of experience, 10 years of experience, you make six-figure salaries in US dollars. I'm I'm not kidding. You can just go search for it. The average salary for an instructional designer in the US is about sixty thousand dollars. Sixty thousand dollars is not something that an engineer. Who is working with TCS? He goes on site. He doesn't make sixty thousand dollars. He probably makes forty or forty-five thousand dollars is what he makes in a year. But uh, instructional designer makes sixty to sixty-five thousand dollars. And if you do it freelance, you make hundred thousand dollars plus. And hundred thousand dollars, believe me, is what a top-tier surgeon or a really big lawyer they start making after maybe fifteen years, twenty years time. So that's the kind of demand that you have for this. And basically, how you kind of start doing it is is basically by learning these kind of skill sets, right? So um, you need to know what instructional design is, right? You need to know how to uh, prepare the theory, how to prepare the framework, how to prepare materials for that. So that's the first thing. And then comes your software skills and technical skills. So you need to know how to use Adobe Animate, Adobe Captivate, Illustrator. Apart from it, some web design basics, maybe some basics of using Dreamweaver and things like that. So don't think that um, these are extremely complicated or something. It is. It is actually uh, easy for you to learn once you understand what is expected out of you. And then you will have to know how to, uh, you know, set up and run a learning management system, probably like Moodle or Canvas, right? And then you will have to know how to set up a website. You will have to know how to host and run your site on AWS. Amazon Web Service, either AWS or or Google Cloud or something like that. But by and far, AWS is the most commonly used web service for uh, learning management systems out there. And then you will also need to have some basic idea about video editing software, probably Adobe Premiere Pro or Camtasia or or something like that. And finally, you will need to have whatever uh, skill sets are needed to put everything together. And start like you know presenting yourself, your portfolios, and things, so that you you can kind of like land not just one single job, because the the amount of skill sets that you need to become an instructional designer, you could you could become an instructional designer. There are a lot of opportunities there for you, but in case you don't end up being an instructional designer, you can still be a technical writer or a content developer or a web designer or a digital marketer. Right. So there are there are five different career paths which you could possibly do if you are if you are basically interested in this. Right. And uh, at Rain Lab, what we are basically doing for you is that we are putting together a master class. Right. So this is a certified course, certificate course. So you get certificates for each single skill set that we teach. So we'll certify you on Animate, on Captivate, on Illustrator. On web hosting, on Moodle management, on Canvas management, you know, basically we certify you on every single uh, you know skill set that you learn. And once you are done with it, we also like offer a three month internship with Rain Labs because that three month internship gives you 
a chance to go from being a fresher to a three month experienced person. And once you have some little experience, then it becomes easy for you to go and, and probably like start getting into jobs elsewhere. Right. So this is basically like what your instructional design design career is all about. So now I would I would like to ask you this question again. So those of you who thought that you are seriously interested in looking at an alternate career, are you really interested in taking up something like this? Right. So if you are interested, then this is basically what Rain Lab can offer for you. So what we're doing right now is our masterclass batch, which is going to be like, uh, um, you know, limited to 10 students. Usually we go with batches of 20, but for, for instructional design, since it's going to be personally mentored and coached by me, we are going to have a batch size of 10 students. And what we're also going to be doing is for the uh, very first batch, we are going to offer um, a pretty, pretty, pretty big discount, which we've never done so far. We're going to offer a 50% discount on the course fees and we're going to limit it to just 10 students. And the best thing I'm going to be personally mentoring you and I'm going to be personally coaching you as well. So what we are offering for you is in case you're looking at an alternate career, right? In case you want to break away from the nine to five jobs of engineering, in case you want to break away from appraisal driven, you know, whatever, whatever problems that you have with the engineering careers, then we are going to give you a huge opportunity for you to break away from all this and start a really awesome career, which would probably allow you to live the life of your dreams. I mean, we are, we are in the process of transitioning ourselves towards instructional design. Um, and that's kind of like how we started working on this two years back. We've been doing this as a service for quite a lot of companies right now. And uh, it's at a certain point that we realized that we really didn't have workers for doing out our own projects as well. And that's basically when we are kind of like offering this opportunity. And if you are interested in joining this masterclass for instructional designers, right? All you'll have to do is to basically, you know, vote on this particular poll that you have in front of you. So this is basically for us to understand that uh, if you want our, our marketing team to call you back and probably like set you up for a one on call, one on one on one discussion with me where we could have a more detailed, more engaged conversation, understand your needs and figure out how we can kind of basically put you up for, you know, starting a career in instructional design. So uh, if you could just go ahead and maybe like vote, maybe say yes or no, then uh, our team can basically like uh, get in touch with you in case you do need some assistance on that. And uh, for those of you who are still wondering, you don't want to join us, but you still want to, uh, you know, get into instructional design, then this is basically what you need to be learning. So you could probably take a screenshot of this slide. Um, you can do it on your own as well. There are, of course, a lot of YouTube videos which can basically teach you this. But basically, when you go through Rain Lab, when you go through our masterclass, what you get is that personal mentoring. We put all the information together and most importantly, you learn from our experience and you also benefit from the kind of industry contacts that we have. So that's basically what Rain Lab is going to do for you. It's going to make things a lot more easier to kind of like transition into these alternate careers. Right. So um, others, I mean, I think we just had five people who who answered on it. Uh, we don't share your results with anyone. No one's going to know how you voted. So you could just basically go vote for it. So we understand if we need to get in touch with you, if you're interested, if you're not interested, if you could quickly go make a vote, I think we can move on and probably like uh, get on to the, the next part of the session. Can you guys quickly, you know, vote and let us know if you are interested, if you're not interested. And uh, basically, if you're not interested as well, uh, maybe you could just let us know that why is it that you're not interested? So we, we, we understand uh, if this has got something to do with this or if it is something like uh, which we can probably like improve in the future. So your feedback in case you have voted no on the previous question, then uh, you could basically like, uh, you know, let us know what we can do to kind of make things better for you. Right. And uh, if you are still not sure about what you want, the options are still open for you. Um, if you if you want to kind of like uh, talk more about this, if you want to have a one on one conversation with me, if you want to understand if you would be capable of doing this, if you want to maybe even, you know, take a trial class for something like that, you could go back to the previous poll and just click yes. 
uh, when Raj calls you up, you could tell him that you don't want to enroll right now, but you maybe you want to just have a discussion with us. You could you could basically do that. So uh, since we have five people who have answered that you're not sure about what you want, um, I would request you guys to just go back to the previous poll and just uh, click yes on it. Um, so what we know is we, we can kind of like get in touch with you and you could possibly like ask for a more in-depth discussion on this or something like that. So you could talk to me one-on-one -on, -one on a video call or something and we can understand how we can kind of make things easy for you, right? So any questions that you have, I think we can take the questions right now. So if you are really wanting to know something more about it, you could just put your questions on the questions tab I can take your questions right now and and probably like uh, we can we can take things forward from there any questions regarding this as in if you are if you're still interested in in um, moving forward with these alternate careers what do you think we can do to kind of uh, make things easy for you how do we how do we help you guys out any questions related to that you could just put the questions out there on the questions tab and i would be more than happy to answer them for you of course, if there's no questions, if you guys are okay with it, um, I think we can wind up the session as well. Anyone has any questions?